Today we're going to do an overview of Gmail. As you can see, this is a fresh new account. I've changed the background and other bits and pieces that you'll get when you first set up your account. It'll be here. Um, so these features I'm not going to cover because quite simply you'll do that as soon as you set up your account. What I will do is actually cover some of the other bits and pieces that you'll find useful and may not even see if you're using Gmail on a regular basis. Um, so the first thing we're going to talk about is the compose button which is on the top left here and I'm going to send an email to myself on my other account. I'm going to just call this test. test. Now one of the features you have here, say I just sent this then realized that I'd forgotten an attachment. So watch where I click here and then I'll go to the left. Send the email. Oh, I've just realized. Undo. And it will open it back up before you send it. Um, this is very useful for things like that where you forgot an attachment or you forgot to add a, another person to the email, etc, etc. It's a very, very useful feature. And then obviously you've got access to your Google Drive and other bits and pieces here. Put photos in there. Confidential mode. Put images in there. Um, insert links to websites, attach files, etc, etc. You can also link this to Dropbox, but we'll come to that later. Now, there is a time adjustment you can do for the undo feature, which if we go over to the settings here, and we'll go settings, and you go down here, undo send, you will see you can change it from 5 seconds to 30 seconds. Uh, reasonably, I think 20 seconds is good. Um, below that it's more likely I've forgotten it than just realized and by that time it's already gone so um, I'm set mine at 20 seconds it would just run through the settings quickly um, like here images always display external images sometimes you may want to switch that off experimental access so maybe there's new features that will appear and disappear which sometimes happens with Gmail and other Google products as they test stuff Microsoft does the same but I'm interested in seeing what's new so I'll leave that switched on Conver conversation view keeps them in sequence where you can actually see the full conversation sometimes that can get a bit confused um, but generally I try to use it it gets confused with things like um, if you've got multiple emails from well emails to you um, that have been forwarded from multiple people and it can get confused from who the who is the original senders that's the only issue I have with that but beyond that is pretty useful um, the rest of it's pretty self-explanatory this is an important one put your signature in here your contact information phone numbers all those sort of bits and pieces go in there and this one down here, you can set up for auto reply when you're out of the office. So it automatically will send this message saying, sorry, not here. And then you can put the dates on there as well. Important, if you are using this, put the last day. The reason being, it will automatically switch it back off. Because I know uh, from experience uh, with some people I work with, they forget. And sometimes you have to remind them when you see them face to face because they've been able to get your emails for a couple of days. Um, over here you've got other tabs, labels will come across and talk about inbox, how they're set up, whether you want the updates on their forums. These are the different headings that will come across, I'll show you those in a second. Importance markers, filtered email, a bit about the account and how it's set up, filtered and blocked addresses, you can add them to here. The mail, mail setup, pop is disabled, configure your email client. So you set this up here, we take your setup to um, Outlook, etc. But a lot of these will automatically do it as soon as you put Gmail in it anyway. Same as IMAP, a lot of it auto configures. So don't worry about that too much. Add-ons, we haven't gone through those yet, but we'll get to those later. The chat, is it on or off? Because maybe you don't want it at all. Advanced don't really need to get into offline modes disabled because I'm not using Chrome because you will need that in Chrome and you can change the themes so you click set theme you can change it to whatever you like let's just click on that one it'll just do a quick update we'll save that is that so that's 
the basic settings. Now we go back to the main page. I always just press the top Gmail button. Discard changes, yes. Okay, so we're back at the main page. These are the different sections you have in your emails. Now, I haven't actually got an email. Oh, there's one email. So what we've got here, this is the email that Google sent me. Hi Matt, basically setting up your own account, blah, blah, blah. Now, bear, bear in mind, I'm, I'll give you an example. I'm at work, I've just had an email come through at five o'clock, I'm just about to leave the office, and I've, I've read it, but I don't want to reply to it in the, until the morning. There's a button over here called snooze, and you can do it for tomorrow and set it for eight o'clock in the morning. That way, you're gonna have it first thing in the morning. It's not dropped into the other emails in the sense that you've read it and you may have forgot about it overnight. Snoozing it means that you've read it, but you're saying, look, show it again to me tomorrow. No problem with that. Same with this weekend. You may wanna do that as well. Maybe you're going on a hike or something else and don't need to read the email till Saturday morning with the directions. So you may actually wanna set it like that. Very useful feature. Now, if we go back, well, compose, okay. Don't need that either. Social, social tab, you'll get Facebook and all those bits and pieces in here. Promotions you'll get from various sales things like um, booking.com and things as well. They'll throw up in here um, and Wish and all those. Um, and then you get your emails, your primary emails in this one. The idea being is you get the main emails and the not so important or irrelevant. Uh, go in these other options and you can add to it. There is a, one for forums. There is one uh, for something else as well Now if we go down the tabs here You can see it's a very basic one. We've got categories broken down here social updates forums Which are these ones on the top so this on the top don't really need it But you can also add labels. So for example, this one's important. So say I wanted to Edit it. I think I can do it. No, it won't let me do that. Okay. It must only work with new sections. Create new label. Uh, let's call this work related. Just an example. And then you can put other ones under this. They could be work related and then a specific project. So put work related. I just want to show you this feature. Where are we? Work related. And here we can change the tab color. So the tab, I may want to be blue. So I know that these are specific to work, may have one for family, a different color, may have one for environment that's green. Very basic, but it separates them and keeps it all tidy and simple. Down here, you've obviously got your, um, out, uh, what do you call it, H Hangouts, Google Hangouts. You can set that up, set up a new group for conversations, etc. Useful feature on there. I'll cover it in more detail on another video. You can see down here as well, we've got 15 gigabytes of space on our Google Drive space as well. Something I've not used at all on this account yet, but that's another thing that comes in quite useful for sending out flyers and things like that. Uh, could be business related, could be birthday parties, whatever, where you keep them on your Google Drive and send them to multiple people. In the same way, you may have written a document and you can share the link to everybody as well. So the Google Drive being interfaced is quite good. Um, the other thing that's a bit scarce on this at the moment is a lack of emails. Down the right hand side is the bit you, you may not have come across or you may not even notice, but you've got a calendar already built in here. Um, so we open that up, it's just setting it up because it's the first time it's been opened. Take a second. Okay, it's still loading. Okay, we'll do something else, we'll come back to that in a minute. Uh, so this one, we also have tasks. Take me back to the task list. These are the tasks that set up when you set up your account. Connect it to your phone, change your profile image, import contacts, learn how to use your Gmail account created, choose a theme. This tasks over here, which is also now loading for the first time, you can actually set tasks on the side of your mailbox, which is very, very useful. So for example, uh, must call doctor, let's just say must call doctor today and and I can add a date to that which is today and quite simply go back, it's, it's now linked to the task and I can mark that as complete so you, 
you can put your daily task weekly or whatever very useful little feature in the same way you've got what's called keep which is basically just notes so for example um, in here let's just have, let's just call this um, lottery numbers uh, and we'll Mike, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you can have different people's numbers or whatever in here, and it will keep them every week. It doesn't; it's not time sensitive. So you could have the lottery numbers for everybody at work. It may, if you're the person who pulls their lottery on, but it could just be as useful for keeping some telephone numbers, favorite restaurants, you name it. You can put a note in there. Very, very useful. And then obviously we go back to calendar. Oh, it failed to load. There we go, it's got it. So it's got the various days in here that are all completely irrelevant to me beyond daylight saving time, which is the, probably the most relevant here for me, which is on Sunday the 20th of, eight, 28th of October, October. Lots of dates in there I don't really want, and there's a way to disable all those. Select calendars. I don't want birthdays, don't want holidays in Spain. Um, I just want myself and as you can see it's got rid of all the stuff I'm not really that interested in and then here uh, meeting starts I'll give a date for the 4th ends on the 4th 1 till 2 p.m. put the guest names on there put a description in there press save and now that's in the calendar so we go calendar you can see we've got something booked in Whoa. booked in for the fourth very easy to use and that's that's the whole concept of the gmail features and it's one of the things I do like it's very easy to use fairly expansive if you click on the plus on here on the add-on you'll see there's a lot of interesting features in here um, personal contact relationship management and mail merge got Trello, Zoom, DocuSign so you can actually get your signatures set up on there as well there's a lot of things to choose from very quick and easy to use and let's just add one let's, I'm actually gonna add DocuSign because it's a product I use so click install continue yeah continue just click on there once they have all those features get ready to install it has been installed and it will appear now on the right hand side as you can see it's downloading it and installing it well, I say downloading it's obviously in the browser um, but now DocuSign is there open an email to select DocuSign for related content and as we're short on emails right now there's not a lot we can do about that um, but emails very quick and easy to use you can add to import your contacts as well which is also a useful thing um, and I believe it can import them from multiple places let's see if we can import some contacts import contacts and emails where do we gonna want to get them from I'm gonna take them from my hotmail to see if it can do it I don't know don't think it can but it can try having to think about it but sign into your other email account to import export please continue and follow the instructions below blah 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 now I'll see if it tries to log in if it does then obviously you can import from hotmail yes it can take from hotmail as well so you're gonna be able to import from multiple email sources as well which is another good feature because it simplifies the process of the transition if you're moving from Outlook for example or moving from Thunderbird um, and having specific emails if you can log in and actually pull the data across it just simplifies the whole process but anyway thanks for watching hope you found the tutorial quick and easy